In Europe, there are some countries that have full reimbursement. For example, Germany fully reimburses insulin taking type ones and twos for real time CGM. There's reimbursement in Austria and Switzerland. There's local reimbursement in Sweden. There's some reimbursement in the Netherlands. In the UK, it's been very limited through primarily the clinical commissioning groups, the CCGs, and many CCGs have been covering it. However, what we're finding, we just um, saw a survey that was just completed, and 40 to 50 percent of the survey respondents on CGM are paying for it out of pocket. Oh gosh, I'd, a, a few thousand pounds a year, yeah. It's, it's not cheap and it's, it's significant to somebody who is not used to paying out of pocket for medical devices and frankly it's a little inconsistent because some CCGs cover and that's wrong because this is a clinically proven technology and if one CCG is covering it, frankly, the other should be covering it and people on you know, the west side of town get covered and the people on the east side of town aren't. No, not at all. It's to everybody taking insulin. Recent data has shown in the diamond and gold studies, for example, it doesn't matter how you deliver insulin, the outcomes are pretty much the same as when you take it with a pump. It's really, you've got to know where your glucose is going, then you can figure out what kind of insulin to take and how it should be delivered. Well, let me tell you, so, so what we've done is we've modeled a short-term budget impact, which is one to three years. We looked at real patient data from the Northwest Clinical Commissioning Group. So if they've got about 150,000 people with diabetes in that region, 10% of them, let's say, have type 1. So let's say we've got 15,000 people that are taking insulin in that CCG region. We look at the people with hypoglycemia and awareness. That's a condition where you really have no warning signs, usually people that have had diabetes a longer time, and they have no warning signs. So when hypoglycemia strikes, it is devastating. We looked at those people. They have a six-fold likelihood of having a severe event than a normal taking insulin dependent diabetic, right? So a six-fold likelihood of event, what we did is we gave them all CGM, this is in the model, we gave them real-time CGM with alerts and alarms, and we showed that we could reduce the episodes of hypoglycemia easily 50%, which then reduced the severe events in the hospital, as well as the A&E calls. So we see a significant savings, short-term, from just the prevention of hypoglycemia in this high vulnerable population. Uh, like I said, it's about 20% of severe events in this population result in inpatient admission. We've got somewhere around 80% that may end up actually in the ER, whether or not they have to go to the hospital as an inpatient is another story, but it's, it's profound in people with hypoglycemia and awareness. from the models it does. Now, short term, we found that the Northwest CCG, again, based on real prevalence data of this condition, and modeling, assuming that we're gonna reduce the episodes of severe hypoglycemia by about 50%, we saw that it could save a million dollars, or it may cost a million, just depending upon, you know, kind of the parameters that are put into the model when we run our sensitivities. But the important point is, it is excellent value for the money. And to be able to cover these people from having devastating lows is a really good, good thing to do, clinically and economically. When we do a long-term cost-effectiveness model, it in fact has a very favorable cost-effectiveness ratio over the lifetime of the patient. In the survey data, not a big difference. But again, that's a self-selected survey. In studies that have been done, and when you do an analysis of this from the literature, you find really no differences in outcomes between people taking shots, multiple daily injections, and pump therapy. The key is the CGM. That's what takes basically slack out of the system. That's what gets rid of the hypoglycemia.
I have a really strong takeaway message, and it's that this technology should be made available to the most clinically needy patients. And ever since, uh, we've started selling CGM Direct, actually, in the UK, and ever since we've opened that direct office, the sales have gone through the roof, which is great. The problem is people are paying for it out of their own pocket. And uh, they're getting access to it, so my takeaway is they're buying it, it works, and it saves the system money.